When I'm talking about veganism here, in large part, I'm talking about the way it's presented on this, the YouTube platform. So, I bought my version of a bulletproof vest. Veganism is two entirely different things that are bound and twisted into one, and I'm going to do my best to unravel them. There's a vegan diet, and then there's a vegan ideology. The old word book defines an ideology as a set of opinions or beliefs of an individual or group. Now you can eat a vegan diet without the ideology, but you can't have the vegan ideology without the vegan diet. Let me explain. Veganism is the exclusion of all animal products either direct or derived, including dairy and eggs. Now, there are a number of reasons why you'd want to exclude these things that have got nothing to do with ideology. Availability, allergy, preference. But if you believe, do not even partake in the communion of Christ with its symbolic cannibalism. For I tell you, salvation does not lie in the land of milk and honey. Only damnation. Then you're not going to be eating it. So I'm just going to draw a quick dotted line here to separate the two and then ask a quick question. Do animals like dogs, cats, tigers, monkeys, do they have belief systems or ideologies? Well, not that we can tell. Ideologies develop from the higher brain from the age of four onwards when we outstrip our ape cousins. An ideology is an idea, yeah, the clue's in the title, but what makes it different is that we attach an emotion to it. In other videos, I've mentioned that our emotional processor sits on the right side of the brain while we process logical thought with the left side. So when we dream up an idea and then fuse it with emotional energy, which happens after school age, this is all knocking around in the right side of our brain. Now, in this cynical, proof-driven world, how do you convince anybody else of your belief? Michael, you need to do what I say, because I say it. Yes, I'm right. Convinces only those with a child's mentality. That's why parents use it a lot with kids. But if you're an adult with your own beliefs, you're unlikely to fall for that poor man's Jedi mind trick. So the vegan movement has cleverly taken to using science, which by definition is logical and left brain, to complete their perspective. And it's a wonderful plan and very convincing, except for one thing. Nutritional science is about as crooked as a dog's hind leg and is open to interpretation as the various scriptures from around the world, which, by the way, are also ideologies. If you just sit down for one second and think realistically at how any scriptures must be put together with what you know about how information spreads, you're looking at the following. Vested interests, cherry picking, word of mouth, Chinese whispers, political messages, misunderstandings in translation, mistranslations, money, the list goes on and on. And here are the considerations of any nutritional scientific study. Vested interests, cherry picking, poor experimental setup, manipulation of raw data using statistical analysis, finding causation where only correlation exists, misunderstanding the data, misrepresenting the data, money list goes on and on. I said it before, nutritional science does nothing but confuse the issue of nutrition and simply provides the ammunition for the fringe groups to plug back into their ideology so they can stand there and say, I'm right and the science backs me up. Actually, I've never said that, but that's what I meant. This leaves the polarized fringes playing top trumps with the studies and now they progress to thinking they're playing poker. I see your 2009 study from France with 43 references, and I raise you with this 2011 study from Finland with 46 references. That whole enterprise is exhausting and pointless, especially if you don't have a dog in the race. The only reason that someone will bother to do it is because they're driven by passion, which is emotion coming from the right side of their brain, and it creates a completely self-sustaining ecosystem. Go check out a vegan channel's comment section to see what I mean. It's all wrapped up in right and wrong, another right brain concept, and then propped up with studies that are vastly open to interpretation. As it stands, I can yap on about the right side of this picture, which is where most of the vegan community seems to spend all of its energy, but there's little point in arguing with somebody else's belief system. In the worst case, you waste your time, but in the best case, you change their mind 
then the one thing I can be sure about in the vegan community is whatever these vegans are doing is working for them. So why would I want to change that? So I'm going to focus on the left side of my line. Take all the ideology away and just focus on the vegan diet, i.e. no animal products. Now defining your diet, whatever it is, by exclusion is going to get your success stories and your failures. Now there are diets that predominantly exclude fat, carbs, gluten, whatever. But the only thing we know for certain about exclusion is that it works for some people for some period of time and doesn't work for others or makes no difference. Now there's a major health risk in excluding protein. You can develop kwashiorkor. Now mention vegan at your next cookout and you'll probably hear... Oh food! <laughs> Could've get protein! But vegans aren't excluding protein. Not by a damn sight. They're excluding a source of protein. That's entirely different. Protein exists happily in plants and animals. So is there a difference between plant and animal protein and which is better? Click on science time to be magically transported to the answers to everything to, to, to do with that question. You know, about the differences and you know, which is better. Go on, you want to know the answer. You know you want to know. Yeah, Alright then, just press the subscribe.